Okay, and, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, anything else? Okay. Well, now we have an opportunity for uh, public comment. So, does anybody have public comment? Jean, I have something I'd like to talk about if if you're willing to let me have a minute. Please. Um, and I wonder if I could be allowed to share screen um, for just a moment. Lisa, can she do yes. that? Yes, go <laughs> ahead. Do you know do you know how to do it? Or well, I'm hitting the button. Let's see what, what happens here. Choose what I want to share. I don't know. Um do you have it's a shared a, content? Okay, so this one is, can you see what I have on the screen here? Yes, we can. Um, this is the, the website for the Transforming Care Conference, which will take place on October 4th in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, it's, a, it's specifically for LGBTQ plus and uh, HIV health equity kinds of issues. And I, it's, it's a very good conference. And I've attended that before. And I know that probably everybody can't drop what they're doing and run to Columbus, um, but it is available as a virtual conference as well. And it's not terribly expensive. And I think that it's worth uh, taking a look at if you have a chance, uh, if you have interest in LGBTQ health issues. So that's one of the conferences I wanted to talk about. And the other one, can you see this now on the screen? No, it hasn't changed. Okay. Well, I see joy and resilience. Is that the one? I don't know how to get this to change. Hang on a second. Uh, we might all be stuck here in cyberland. I don't know. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Let me try this again. OK, hold on. Um, I have too many tabs open and I'm not sure what it will do. No, nope, that's not the one. Pardon me, I don't mean to be wasting your time. You're fine. Well, I can't seem to do it, so cancel that. I don't want to waste your time anymore. Um, but the other one is the uh, Let's Get Better Together LGBT conference that takes place in Phoenix. And there's a website for that as well. Um, and uh, that one will be on October 18th and 19th. Most of it will be on the 19th. And that's an in-person conference, but it, like I said, it's in Phoenix, so it's more accessible. It's also not terribly, terribly expensive, and it is an a LGBTQ specific conference for sure. And uh, they do a really nice job also. If you don't mind, I'd like to put the, uh, these two websites in the chat so that uh, they can be correctly recorded in the minutes so that you'll have them. If that would be our, I know we don't use the chat for things generally, but it seems like this might be a chance where that would be appropriate. Um, Actually, if you don't mind, Dee, if you could email that to me and then I can forward it out to the committee. Who's me? I'm sorry. Uh, Lisa, sorry. Lisa okay. Kater. Okay, do I have your email? You should have my email address. I'm the staff liaison for the committee. I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to draw attention to those two things because there aren't too many conferences that are LGBTQ specific. And um, I think, and sometimes when they are, they're expensive. And I think that this is just worth knowing about, perhaps sharing with people that you think might have interest. And the only other thing I wanted to say is to thank you all for being uh, commissioners on the Commission on Diversity Awareness. I think it's terribly important work, and I, I appreciate what you do just tremendously. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dee. And uh, when you come back from uh, the Transforming Health Conference, uh, it would be wonderful if you could present to us. 
you know, some information from that conference, because I know it's, uh, you know, one of the things about that conference is it's really got a lot of medical component, which, um, you know, I just think is kind of a real special thing. So just keep that in your hat. I keep that. I don't know how I can do it in 25 words or less, though. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> so anyway, appreciate the chance to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Anybody else for public comments? Okay, so um, it looks like um, uh, it looks like there's no more. So let's move on to approval of minutes. Uh, has has uh, have commissioners had an opportunity to look over the minutes? And uh, I know I didn't find anything that needed to be changed. Uh, did anybody else find anything that needed to be changed? I don't see anything in the chat, Jane. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and uh, vote. Uh, does somebody want to make a, a motion for approval of the minutes as drafted? This is Commissioner Camp. I'll make a motion for your approval. Second. I'll second that. This is Commissioner Gebler. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any of those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, unanimously passes. Now the date scheduled right now for the next meeting is the third Wednesday, which is September 20th. Does that work for everybody? They're saying yes in the chat, Jean. Okay, thank you. And that is our next scheduled meeting. Now we'll move on to action items. Uh, so we'll do an update on the Juneteenth um, uh, designation as a as a um, official holiday. That work group that we're doing in collaboration with Indigenous Commission. And um, the first thing I'll say is that we uh, met with commit uh, with the chair of the county supervisors, Patrice uh, Horseman, yesterday and several people attended. Bethany was there. And um, uh, in fact, I think Bethany uh, sent us um, uh, notes from the meeting. I Here we go. Uh, so I'll just kind of read off of that. Um, it, uh, uh, Patrice was there, Rose Toey, the liaison uh, from the Indigenous Commission was there. I was there, Daryl Marks from several different uh, affiliations, Kimberly Robinson from uh, Live Black Experience, uh, Shauna Whitehat from the Commission of the Indigenous Commission, and Bethany uh, were in attendance. And Rose spoke about why we are partnering to get together uh, and uh, Indigenous Peoples Day designation with the city and partner with the county to do this. And just review that it was a federal holiday, that we do not want uh, Columbus Day as a holiday, which uh, HR leadership in the city, both for Juneteenth and Indigenous Peoples Day, are collecting data and moving forward uh, with which what day to designate as a holiday, whether to replace uh, an existing uh, holiday or uh, add a holiday. And uh, Commission uh, Council Member House has submitted a fair item, so it will be coming up on the um, uh, uh, on the council agenda at some point. And we also talked about, um, you know, the fact that uh, um, the I think Lisa can speak to this more than me. That you know the leadership team at the city uh, HR has suggested that the fair item uh, presentation and request come in combination with the proclamation for Indigenous Peoples Day in October. And uh, uh, Rose was uh, in agreement with that. Uh, Patrice listed the holidays that the county participates in and Columbus Day is not one of them. She did say that she will pass on today's uh, information and elaborated how she supports and espouses the values celebrated on Juneteenth and Indigenous Peoples Month. 
Uh, we discussed the timing moving forward with this and when it could possibly be approved. Patrice requested a, a packet of what we know, the research we've already done, which we will provide. And there was much discussion around the value of these holidays and also how it is uh, celebrated and the capacity of how uh, we do it. Uh, in other words, is this going to be a paid holiday or a celebration? Lots of discussion uh, about the challenges around that, including new information to me. I did not realize that the county actually has a lot less uh, autonomy from the state than the city does. So that was um, kind of bad news for the county and good news for us. So uh, Shauna said that uh, this is where what our people want us to do rather than have the municipalities tell us what to do. And that point is really strongly taken and uh, Kim from LBA uh, reinforced that um, we're doing the work and uh, the the uh, city and county and, and uh, um, uh, state really need to get on the bus with us. <laughs> you know? So next step, Kimberly, uh, Daryl and Rose give guidelines for celebrating these holidays and we have a deadline for data to try to get something together uh, uh, of next Wednesday uh, because we will be meeting our work group, our collaborative work group, we'll be meeting with um, the uh, Tri-Diversity Council meeting uh, of the county at 5.30 next Wednesday. Okay, so uh, Bethany, anything you want to add to that? As I struggle to find my mic button. No, I think that's it. It was just really um, empowering, like you said, to hear everybody say, regardless of this formally passes, this is going to keep moving forward and we hope folks can get on board because this is what our community wants. And that was really empowering to hear. Yep, it's okay, so uh, um, when we come back, Bethany and I next month will have another report for you because we will have by then um, gotten to the um, uh, to the tri the county uh, tri diversity um, uh, council meeting. Oh, Kara is here. Good afternoon. I'm between meetings. We'll be on mute, but uh, mute, but I am here. Welcome, Kara. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, Lisa, do you have any updates from the HR leadership? Um, it was so encouraging uh, to hear you, your report about um, the uh, swift action or at least swift, you know, um, policy research that your committee, your leadership in HR committee is doing. Not at the moment. The, the meeting, meeting we had yesterday, we weren't able to discuss it because we had a lot of other things on the agenda. But hopefully for our September meeting, I will have some information. Awesome. Thank you so much. OK, so we will move on now to discussion of formal efforts uh, for the Women's Rights Commission. Does anybody have anything to um, uh, 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 provide for that? Miss Bethany, do you want to tell them about the calendar that we're doing? So this isn't for the Women's Right Commission. I feel like these two topics keep getting blurred where we have a CODA calendar and resource page. And then I think Jean had talked about wanting to start up the commission again. And I think these two items keep getting blurred because I'm not familiar with what's happening with the commission. Oh, you are correct. You are correct. So I think that I think the last thing that and this is Lisa Cato speaking, I apologize for not being on camera because of some um, Wi-Fi issues. But um, I think, Jean, the last time we talked, we were just still collecting data from the Women's Commission. Like we got some information on what we had done in the past and what the city had done in the past. And it hasn't really moved forward since then because that information was kind of divvied up through the members and we was just waiting on what to do to move forward with that data. OK. Well, I guess at this point, then we can ask the commission. Um, I, I, I can't remember who all was involved with it. Let me pull up my work group um, 
if I can do that without losing Microsoft Teams. Um, hold on. Yeah, because it does uh, keep kind of flowing together and um, OK, let's see. Where is the work group? Work group list. OK, the most recent that I have updated was in July and the calendar group. Um, OK, so I, I see what's happening here. The calendar group and the Women's Rights uh, Commission initiative appear to be um, the same people, which is uh, Bethany, Sarah, and Lisa. Also, uh, Carolyn Kidd on the Women's Rights Commission, uh, Commission initiative, and uh, Kara House. So that's where we was. We was waiting for. I remember Kara had given us some information um, earlier in the summer, and then Carolyn was. Uh, going to give some feedback on some information that she was waiting on. And I think that's where we stopped. Okay. Um, and since Carolyn is not here, I don't want to speak for her. Yeah. Uh, but we maybe need to just move it to the September agenda. And I'll follow up with an email with her to kind of see where she's at with that. That sounds excellent. Yeah, this is Bethany. I think you're right. If I remember correctly, we wanted to get this going again but weren't sure what the next steps were to get an active commission again, if I'm remembering correctly. That is correct. Okay, so this is really weird because I, as since I went out of, I didn't go out of Teams, I just uh, minimized it, and now I can't see anything. Um, do you know what I need to do, Lisa? Yes, did you? Um I just have a blank screen. So you can't see your minute, uh, your, uh, what's it called, the mini minutes? I can't see it. I, I just have a gray screen, but I can hear everybody and my camera is on. I think okay. it's something wrong with me. I think I need to, um, okay, now everybody's coming back. Okay, so I just shared my screen with you. Okay. So you should be able to see okay uh where we're at so okay we just did discussion b so yeah. we're on c yep and um yeah and i've actually <laughs> i actually printed it off so i've got it in front of me so is there any way for me to see the people again you should be able to hit the chat oh, okay or now the people got... tab the okay people tab, and then that should be able to okay do you still need me to pull up my? No, no, um, okay, no, got you. I, uh, I, I, I've got. I can see everybody now. Okay. There, it went away. Oh well. Anyway, it doesn't matter because uh, I, I don't need to see everybody. So, um, so action item C is the water reliability uh, roundtable discussion for commission members to attend a session uh, for dates on September 6th, 7th, or 8th. They're going to be doing this roundtable three different times. I know that Alan uh, forwarded the email. Um, is there any discussion or any interest? I think this is a really, really, really important um, roundtable to have commission on diversity awareness participation. Uh, water is life and water is, um, uh, it, it's, we need to have our voice there, I do believe. Is there anybody that would like to, um, I'm not sure, uh, all Alan's email said was that he had reserved one space for us. I don't know if that means one space on each one of the round tables or just one space for one of the round tables. Because like I said, it looks like there's, it's going to be presented three different times. Okay, chat, I see something in chat. And it is, I would love to have more information on the time. Okay, uh, and uh, I, I, uh, as soon as we're finished with this meeting, uh, Bethany, I will get in touch with Alan and have him forward specifics to the entire commission. And we have until, um, I think maybe until the 25th or so. Or no, I'm confusing that with something else. Um, 
anyway, I'm not sure when we have to um, when we have to submit our names to be uh, roundtable participants. But since it's in um, September, it's coming up. So it's seeing I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm looking for it right now. I know that I and this is Lisa K that's speaking again. Um, I know that I have signed up for the September 8th one. And what it is, is there's different times on each day. So uh, the 6th, 7th and the 8th, there's different time slots. And it's just according to when you're available for the time slots. And I do believe he did say that this would fill up fairly quickly. Um, I'm looking to see if I can see the actual email that he sent out. Um, but yes. I am attending it on the 8th. That's fantastic. OK. Well, as soon as uh, um, if you can forward, um, you know, uh, Alan's email and we can get some specific times, it seems to me that um, we're not limited to just one person on one day. I think that if there's other people uh, uh, that would like to, um, and Bethany is saying I have time on the 6th, so. So I guess what we'll need to do is deal with this on uh, email um, after the yeah. meeting. Yeah, go I ahead. Will, I will re-forward the email out after the meeting. OK, great. And I would just really encourage, uh, again, uh, water, um, whether there's too much coming down the hill in the form of floods or water in terms of where it gets sold to, like a snowball or water in terms of availability, um, it is a diversity issue. So I'd really encourage people to participate if their uh, schedules allow it. OK. Um, any other comments on that? All right. I don't see anything in the chat. OK, we will move on then to uh, reports and uh, discussion items. Um, Lisa, I just have a point of um, information. I forgot to do an announcement. Can we go back at the end of the meeting to announcements? Are we allowed to do that? I'm sorry, I was talking and I was on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So there was something in the announcement section that you forgot to mention. Yes. Yeah, um, we can do that toward the uh, end when we do the adjournment, if you want to mention it uh, before then. OK, all right. Yeah. All righty. Um, so then the next thing is proclamations. And I see, um, you know, we have the proclamation from the um, uh, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month coming up. And Mandy, do you want to um, talk about this? So let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. OK, so um, we did go ahead and create the proclamation for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, I know that uh, Carolyn is not here. I believe she said she's in the UK. Um, so if anybody wants to um, take a look at it, I can read it for everybody. Um, and then we can see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, do you mind sharing it on the screen so everybody can see it? Sorry, I was on mute again. <laughs> I apologize, you guys. Struggle with Microsoft Teams today. And I am sharing what for the screen? The Hispanic Heritage Month proclamation. I got it. OK, just one moment. And I will get that up for you. Give me just a second, you guys. It seems like we're all struggling with Teams today. Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> I'm, definitely, I'm definitely struggling because I still got a gray screen, but that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I'm wondering because I'm I'm like really weirded by it that it's really acting crazy today, which is why I'm very afraid to turn my camera on because I think it'll cut everybody off. But, I can um, share it. <laughs> here we go. I got it, and I'm gonna got go it. ahead and pull it up on my screen. You guys should be able to see it. 
Perfect. Okay. Um, so the city of Flagstaff observes, embraces, respects, and celebrates National Hispanic Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month is also called Mes de Herencia Hispania. Is celebrated nationwide from September 15th through October 15th each year to commemorate the history, culture, and contributions of the Hispanic, Latino, and Latinx community, peoples whose ancestors originated from the Caribbean, Central, and South America, Mexico, and Spain. Hispanic Heritage Month began in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week, which first introduced by Congressman George E. Brown in June 1968 under President Lyndon B. Johnson and was later extended to a 30-day celebration by President Ronald Reagan in 1988. And the city of Flagstaff understands the significance in celebrating the anniversary of independence for Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, Mexico, and Chile, and to highlight the rich heritage, arts, histories, food, music, and traditions of all 26 plus Latin American nations, paying tribute to all their contributions to our city, state, and nation. The city of Flagstaff is committed to the three themes of 2023 Hispanic Heritage Month, which is prosperity, power, and progress, as declared by the National Council of Hispanic Employment Program Managers. The city of Flagstaff recognizes that these themes are interconnected, meaning that our economic success would lead to more power and influence, which in turn propels us forward to further progress in our Flagstaff community. This progress would be demonstrated in diversity, equity, and inclusion by embracing all Hispanics, Latinos, and Latinx identities, which encompasses people in Black, African, Asian, Indigenous, and queer communities, and the Hispanic, Latino, and Latinx communities have been integral to the prosperity of Flagstaff as their contributions are immeasurable, representing the best of American values, leaving an enduring mark on our local culture and economy. Starting from the 1920s, these communities continue to be represented in Calaveras, Los Chantes, La Plaza Nueva, La Plaza Vieja, and many other areas of Flagstaff. The city of Flagstaff understands that the Hispanic, Latino, and Latinx communities are particularly entrepreneurial and play a vital role in our economy and workforce and have also contributed to Flagstaff's growth. These communities are also represented in city and county leadership, service and education, business, medicine, social services, military service, and veterans organizations, and visible through nonprofit organizations such as Ballet Folklorico and De Colores and Nuestras Raices, and the City of Flagstaff Commission on Diversity Awareness recommends the designation of September 15th, 2023 through October 15th, 2023 as Hispanic Heritage Month in unison with national and statewide observances. Beautiful. Yes. It's really comprehensive and really fantastic. Oh, Sarah just put in the chat. Do we want to include, uh, include the uh, term Latin? So, um, I mean, I, so I know Latinx is kind of the same thing. Um, I know they're both like the gender neutral alternatives. Um, so I'm, I've, if you feel like it's definitely, um, more inclusive we can certainly use that term um as well um but i i know that that latinx is generally also gender inclusive i'm not sure if there's like um an actual like main difference does anybody else have an opinion on that i'm fine the way the the way that it is but uh you all are the chairs, so it's up to you all. Yeah, no, they're both gender neutral, so it's really just a, a preference. Yeah, I, I mean, we just, this is Commissioner Jarvis. I just know that when we just published a peer review paper, we kind of went back and forth on that. So I think we used Latin, a, Latin I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to. The only reason I would think Latin, Latinx is only just because that's, I think, more well known. 
um, and it's more commonly used and it might be a little bit more recognizable at this point. I'm not, I mean, if anybody else has any suggestions or ideas. Would this age better with Latin A or Latin X, I guess is what, it, what I'm curious about. This is Bethany, because I think both are wonderful, but what do you think would age and be more accessible as it ages? Uh, Annalika has a comment. Do you want to go ahead, Annalika? Sure. Um, so I was just saying, uh, I think it would be one or the other. They are both uh, gender neutral. Personally, I enjoy the X um, just because of the Mesoamerican roots of, of the letter. But I know that Latina has become uh, more popular academically. I think something just to ponder before we submit it just to and I think Mandy brings up a good point too. just something that will. As we look at it in five or 10 years. Something that we will be happy with. OK, Marcella is typing. In the chat. Yeah, I can just voice. Um, I think Latinx is fine for now, and I think we're, you know, we're going to have a process of reviewing these. So if we want to make adjustments in the future, I think that that's okay. Just given the community um, audience is a little bit more broad. Okay, sounds good. Um, I do have another comment um, just related to the countries that were mentioned. Is there a specific reason that we identified those those countries or um, yeah, I'm just curious as to why those countries were selected. Then something I would definitely have to ask uh, Carolyn about what those particular ones were um, chosen for, because I know she's the one who who picked those specific ones. Um, but I can definitely find out why those ones were were chosen specifically. OK, yeah, I think that'd be great just to have an understanding, um, because obviously the the complexity of when we if we're going to name specific countries the complexity of who owned who when and some of those countries were once combined countries and are now separate countries it just might get uh complicated if we list specific countries versus saying like you know a broader term like all nations or um all communities no definitely yeah, i can see that for sure Yeah, if we just um, uh, identify regions, because uh, certainly regions um, incorporate or um, embrace different peoples. Um, one of my uh, kind of administrative issues here is um, if we want to make that change, we maybe ought to make it now uh, because we won't meet again before um, well, this is July. We will meet again in August. Yeah, so we can actually um, forward the vote to next month uh, because August that's now. what we. I'm it's sorry. August. What? It's August. It is August. Yeah, so we've got time. Okay, so we can vote on it next uh, in August, and by then, um, uh, Carolyn will be back. I mean, uh, yeah, Carolyn will be back, and uh mandy you and carolyn can um you know kind of discuss these uh issues that were brought up um how does that sound to everybody okay so she's not coming back till september so she'll be in our september meeting because this is august now Ugh. no this is this is oh lord have mercy i am just i got mixed up i am so sorry we can't we we are going to have to resolve it um yeah i i i did a i, I did a time warp folks i, I went into oh you're fine. <laughs> you're um, fine and over here du duplication is not duplicity oh man my keyboard is not <laughs> cooperating today um gender it would encompass latinos so uh let's uh well why doesn't somebody put forward a motion what what do we want to do I'm OK with with going over it with Carolyn once she returns to kind of more fine tune it. If we want to make the the countries like uh, Marcella said more broad, we can definitely do that. Um, and then just agreeing on what version of 
the Latinx or Latin area we want to use. So let's make a, I think that maybe we can make a decision about which terminology we want to use and then uh, take a vote on it with the um, understanding that when Carolyn gets back, Mandy and and uh, Carolyn can resolve the, uh, the country naming issue. How does that sound to people? I think that sounds good. This is Commissioner Jarvis. Carolyn. Carolyn won't be back till the end of the month. Is that OK? Will that still be enough time? I think she gets back the 27th. Of August? Yeah. OK. Um, Kara is with us, but I don't know if she can talk because she said she was in another meeting. I would like to ask her if that's enough time to get the proclamation going. Council, City Council doesn't go back in session until August 28th. Um, OK, she's saying Kara is saying just keep timing in mind. If you want this closer to the start of the celebration, you need to get it to us or to council around the 5th of September. So we have a little bit of time, but we we definitely. definitely have to yeah, Carolyn and I can definitely do that. I can just uh, impress the the importance of like the timing and and getting that turned in. OK, so what we're going to do then, does anybody want to make a mesh? a measure, uh, uh, a motion to um, uh, send this uh, proclamation forward to council uh, with uh, in its current drafted form with the caveat that uh, we are going to revisit Latinx versus Latine. And um, although it seemed to be the, let me back up, it seemed to be kind of the consensus on this group to go with the uh, Latinx, is that right? Yes. OK, so the, the thing that needs to be considered is the country names. Yes. All right. So does anybody want to make a motion? So question, uh, this is Commissioner Jarvis. Could we make these edits through the group via email uh, prior to and get a finalized version uh, that way? Yes, Ms. Jarvis, you, we can definitely do that. Pretty much like we did with the other proclamation, we yeah. were still kind of working on that up until the very end. Uh, we do have the option of sending out the email to the uh, to the commissioners, and you guys can get work done on that with the changes and get those over to us by uh, before the 5th. Um, so I would say if Carolyn is coming back on the 27th, uh, that someone reaches out to her maybe on the 28th, um, if that's possible, and we can and move it forward so that it can be done in a timely fashion to get it or over. Or somebody wants to, wants to help with some edits and then send it back to me, I can I can definitely finish it and then get it sent off as well, just to make sure it's, it's done in time, because I'm the other part of the committee for this proclamation. Okay, and then okay. also keeping Sounds in mind good. that we've got a holiday right before that too. So, well, I can definitely do that if we want to have some input. I'll, I'll be more than happy to to put it together. Great. Sounds good. Okay. Thank okay. you, Ed. We got. Yeah. I'm a little unclear. Are we going to take a vote via email, or are we going to vote to accept the to move the proclamation forward to council uh, pending um, edits? done by Mandy and Carolyn. Yep, that's the vote that we're doing. OK, I think so. <laughs> yes, something clear as well. We will edit it first prior to sending it off. Yes. Yeah. OK, so does somebody want to make that motion? <laughs> Anybody? This, this is Commissioner Gabler, I'll motion. Fabulous. Second. Commissioner Pino, I'll second. Jarvis. OK, yeah, and camp, we all agree. <laughs> all agree. <laughs> all those in favor. Aye. 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 No opposed. OK, any abstentions? None. OK, it passes unanimously. Thank you so much for this work and thank you uh, for uh, everybody being um, you know, uh, just uh, uh, very um, 
aware of and concerned with with language. Language is, uh, you know, as we know, foundation of uh, uh, reality. So we need to get that right. So thank you, everybody. Uh, OK, so moving on uh, update from staff lays on. You're on Lisa. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Again, I apologize for not having my camera on, but as many of us discussed prior to the meeting, we're all seeming to have a little bit of Wi-Fi issues today. Storms and lightning and wind and rain and all of that has affected us. So my update today is just to remind you that City Council will go back into session on August 28th. Um, Jean, literally her name just escaped me just now, mentioned about the update on the Juneteenth and HR leadership is moving forward with collecting data on that and moving forward with trying to uh, generate as much as they can to uh, look at possibly doing Juneteenth as a paid holiday and also Indigenous People Day. So all of that is in the works when I will have an update on what the city determines and how they're moving forward, I will let you all know. But again, City Council goes back into session on August 28th. And that's all I have to add, but since Ms. House is on the line, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you just in case there's something you would like to mention. Okay, I don't see her uh, putting anything in the chat. <laughs> she said she's good. Okay, no problem. And I know that she said she was in between meetings. So sorry to put you on the spot. I just wanted to make sure we didn't forget about you. But thank you for joining the meeting today. I second that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the little blinky, uh, the little blinky eyes in the chat. <laughs> okay. okay. We will move on to number B. Um, I, I think that really this is probably my fault, uh, an error in the um, in the agenda because we did this last month. We already have the election for chair and vice chair completed. And of course, we're going to welcome uh, Mandy Gebler, Commissioner Gebler as chair um, in October and uh, vice chair um, uh, Carolyn Kidd as uh, vice chair. So. Um, we can just move right past that. That's already been done. Yeah, we just wanted to mention it, Jean. That's why we put it back on. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. And I'm looking forward to their leadership very much. So on to number C, oh, Marcella, I love the, uh, the celebratory icon in the chat. <laughs> Um, moving on to current commission priorities, work group uh, list report or update. Um, I, I think we're going to clarify. I think the only thing I heard today was clarifying the um, separation of the commission and the um, uh, and the calendar groups. And as Lisa said, we'll have that separated out on the agenda next month. Uh, collaboration with the library. Um, I, I have um, not been able to um, set a, a time to gather together with Felicia. Uh, we at this time, I guess, are still. Um, OK, go ahead, Bethany. I see your hand is up. Sorry, when you're when you're ready, we have an update on the calendar group, so I just wanted to check in on that. OK, please. OK. I feel like I, I interrupted your mid thought. I'm no, so no, we'll go back to the okay. library, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, Commissioner Jarvis and Lisa are on this with me, and Jean, I think we've been keeping you in the loop. We have a calendar ready, and apparently, when you Google um, Flagstaff things, it pulls up old ones, and I did not check that. So, we have a finalized version of. Let me back up. The Commission on Diversity Awareness got approval from the city to add a resource page and a, a monthly calendar of going ons um, that would promote diversity awareness in the city of Flagstaff and in our county. So we're very excited. We have our first version ready to go live for September. Thanks to Commissioner Jarvis and as well to um, Lisa for helping us with this. 
I sent an email requesting a short bio from all of our commissioners because we would like our citizens to know a little bit about ourselves. So what are you passionate about? Why did you want to be a part of CODA? Um, any kind of relevant information to those things would be really valuable. And then anything on your profession, if you would like to add that would be meaningful as well. If you can limit it to you know, five or six sentences, maybe seven max, and really hone in on that and send it to me by Friday or Monday so we can get this out. It just needs to be in a Word document, so email it to me would be fine because I can copy and paste that. Um, but we want to feature the all of our commissioners so if people see us in the community, they can talk with us, they can know us. It's just getting our information out there and getting more of our community involved. Also, if you know of any events, I know that I reached out to Kimberly and other people um, to add on to our monthly calendar. Um, please let them know. And then for our resource page, we will be featuring, we pick different, you know how each month has different diversity awareness themes. So we will go with those months themes. We will feature local information about that. And then we will also be featuring local resources um, that also entail diversity and awareness. So anything on the food bank or anything with the NAU mental health counseling or stuff like that, where we're just trying to feature different local resources. And so if you know anybody that would like to be featured or part of that, please reach out to uh, Commissioner Jarvis, Lisa, or myself. Ah, that was a lot of info. Does anybody <laughs> have any questions? We're so excited about this. Thank you, Bethany. We are very excited about it. And Commissioner Jarvis and Lisa, anything that you want to add? Sorry. No, I think you gave it. I think you gave all the details that we need and the deadline to get the stuff over um, to you. And then Bethany will email it to me and I will um, do my best to have it live by September 1st. Well, and I was delayed. So if it's not September 1st, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? So got it because we do have a couple of holidays in there or one yeah. holiday in there. yeah <laughs> but if anybody has any questions let me know otherwise please get those those bios to me and um i think we were also going to check on the flagstaff website to make sure it has all of our old committee members from coda or commissioners so i think we were looking at um getting that updated as well folks so just share with what you feel comfortable sharing. Sounds good. And yes, we will get it updated because it has some of the old commissioners on there. We want to make sure that it's current. And I also think it may be um, uh, to update that website. You might want to wait until September because that's when we will be shifting over to the new leadership. Um, uh, so. In other words, if we do it like right now in the next couple of weeks, within a couple of weeks, it'll be old leadership. So if it could just reflect the new leadership, the incoming leadership, does that make, am I making sense, Lisa? That's a yes, great idea. That, that makes uh, total sense. And I can definitely wait um, to get that updated. We can still put the calendar up and then just make sure that we update the actual commissioner's names once the changeover happens. You know um, what? I just, I had another thought, folks, because we're putting out so many meaningful, um, like Hispanic Heritage Month, so meaningful, so many meaningful, um, oh my gosh, I just lost the term for what that is. What is wrong with me? Um, so if anybody has anything the where we declare the day, the declarations, what is wrong with my brain today? Um, Proclamation, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> if you could also, if you want to send me the link or send me what proclamations you want us to highlight, we can also do that because this is basically just connecting our community members and citizens with the work that CODA is doing so that they know that we're actually doing stuff too and trying to get them connected to resources. So um, I, can add, I can also add that in on our page too. I think that would be really neat. Okay. Okay, um, and also um, I, I noticed that uh, Commissioner Gibbler said uh, 
that uh, she is uh, needing to update the community access map that is fabulous, uh, a fabulous map that she created for our website. So she'll send that along also, and that's great. And um, Anilika uh, uh, said that she would uh, support waiting uh, until September to find out um, what the changes in the uh, commission are. Okay. Mandy thinks her hand up. Who does? Mandy. Oh, Mandy, go ahead. I would just ask if anybody, like when you have a second, if you could take a peek at that community access map, because um, there are a couple new like mental health agencies that I'm going to be adding to it. Um, I would like to possibly add like resources for like food and clothing. So if there's any that you think would be um, especially imperative to add to that list, if you would just shoot me an email and let me know so I can make sure everything's included on there, because I would like for this this updated map to be as comprehensive as possible. That way people can go to it, open it and then be able to find the most resources at, at once that they can. Excellent. Yes. All right. And um... Sarah, uh, Commissioner Jarvis has asked, where can we find this community access map? It is on our website. If you just go to the uh, Commission on Diversity Awareness website uh, and you just access that by going to the city website, uh, go to government, go down to uh, boards and commission, and then go to the commission. It's an awful lot of clicks. I, I wish we could get a little bit more direct, but um, you know, it's, uh, and go to our commission uh, page and is posted there along with a few other things. The calendar will be posted there. Uh, the survey um, uh, Thank you, Mandy. posted there and, oh, excellent. Okay, Mandy already took care of that. Okay. All right. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, I, I just find this really exciting that we're putting out all this, you know, kind of very uh, concrete educational work. It's great. So back to the collaboration with the library. As far as I know, I know that um, Felicia is continuing to have her monthly LGBTQ plus uh, awareness um, presentations every month. And we're, as far as I know, still scheduled to present again in November. What the plan had been is to prevent, uh, present an update on our history project, collecting stories of uh, the history of the LGBTQ plus uh, community in Flagstaff. Um, and hopefully we will um, have an update for that in November, but um, it hasn't actually been initiated yet because of the changes that happened at the library. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we can get a meeting with Felicia. She has already um, done the um, uh, contact with the state archive and she has uh, whatever, you know, the forms she has created. So the project is almost ready to launch. So um, if we can just um, wait a couple of more months and hope, I mean, a couple of more weeks and hopefully I'll have an actual um, update on that um, next, uh, for the next meeting for September. And I know Annalika and uh, Bethany and our uh, community um, person, uh, Ray Garcia and myself are all still super interested in this project. I just, I, I think we're the, uh, we're the only municipality of size in Arizona that has not created an archive uh, for the community. So it's really exciting that we're, um, you know, going to going to going to launch it very very soon. Um, the library couldn't foresee the uh, changes that went through um, and uh, the interim position that Felicia uh, had to take for a little while, but. We're back on track now and, and hopefully next month we'll have an actual um, uh, update of some um, activities. Update on the fair item for equitable restrooms. I did uh, actually email. Um, Dean, uh, yeah. Dean, before you go there, um, oh, Kara just put in a point of clarification okay. on item 10. Okay, future meetings. Um, 
Rose is collaborating to develop a more representative flag on Native American Month. She and I are in conversation on better represent, represent, rep, representative flags for Black history in Native American his, Heritage Months, but she is not trying to develop a flag for Black History Month. Just wanted to make sure there's not confusion on that. Thank you. And um, when we meet uh, Lisa, uh, we need to just kind of redraft that and and uh, um, be and clarify uh, yeah. according to what um, Councilperson House said. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And as far as an update on the fair item on the equitable restrooms, and maybe um, maybe Kara can um, help out here. I did uh, email the legal department. I emailed Sterling and never got a response. Uh, the last I had been told the equitable, um, the fair item on the equitable restrooms uh, proposal uh, had been referred to legal. That was the last I heard. Um, is there any, does anybody know anything different? And I will follow up with another email to uh, the attorney and see if you will, you know, respond and let me know what the what the status is on whatever research they needed to do. Councilperson House, do you know anything about that? Okay, she's typing. Shoot me an email on that and I'll look into it. Okay, I will, sh I will shoot an email to uh, Councilperson House and, and we'll have a follow up on that next month. And, uh, you know, that was one of the really important things that uh, uh, former, or I guess we'd say uh, chair um, ex officio, <laughs> um, Wegwort did. That was, uh, that was a really important uh, initiative. Okay, so we are now to uh, number 10 and we've already clarified on the on the commemorative flag update. And um, can you just uh, speak very briefly to the anti-camping ordinance that we will move to the um, action items next month, but uh, um, Marcella does have a, a, an update on that. Yes, just a brief update that um, school is back in session and faculty members are back. We have a faculty member who is interested in integrating this as part of their curriculum for um, a project for graduate students. So um, they've requested that we come to speak to the class and um, give an update on the project. Um, I am just running into an issue getting the data, Gene, from um, previous Commissioner Hardy um, we had a couple of exchanges earlier in the summer, but um, Commissioner Hardy had some other things going on, so I still don't have access to the data. So I'm just hoping we can get the data so that we can make it into a project. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Okay. Well, um, and also, if I remember from your email, um, the um, uh, the professor in question uh, was looking for. Um, somebody from our commission to speak to the project. Um, are you looking for a volunteer, uh, Marcella, or are you thinking about doing it yourself? Or I'm going to double check the timing. I think it was the 29th um, from four to six. I just wanted to make sure I was available. Um, Yes, I can do four o'clock that day. So I can, um, I'm happy to speak to it. If somebody else would like to join to learn more and co-represent, that's fine by me. It's, um, it'll be on campus at NAU. Okay. I'm so glad you can do it. Because um, I know I can't. Um, another thing. And well, if anybody wants to uh, join Marcella in that class, um, Go ahead and um, that can just be kind of designated. It is designated already as a work group. So you're allowed without violating open meeting laws to directly email um, uh, Marcella, um, Commissioner Pino to join her um, for that class on the 29th at four o'clock. Okay. 
Well, do we have anything else? Um, that that completes our agenda. Oh, I do want to, since I, I forgot to put this in announcements, we all received an email about um, the, um, uh, the, the folks that are um, granting grants for uh, flood mitigation. Uh, we're looking for reviewers. And um, this won't take a whole lot of uh, anybody's time, but I think it's really important that we have, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, diversity uh, awareness participation in the grant review. Uh, I will resend out that email, but it was sent out a couple of days or a week ago or something. July 25th is, holy moly, this is August. Never mind. Ignore this one. Um, if we if if people didn't submit this, then it's it's already past the time. OK, never mind. I don't know what I think. I don't know what it is that I'm in this time warp. I think that I've entered the matrix or something. I don't know. <laughs> between technology and not being able to figure out what day of the week it is. Um, it has been. <laughs> golly, I'm embarrassed. Um, OK, does anybody have anything else? We've completed our agenda. Does anybody have anything else they want to say before we adjourn? I don't see anything in the chat. OK, well, I thank everybody for being here and uh, I thank you for your patience with my confusion today and um, I uh, really look forward to and I really Thank you for all these wonderful initiatives that are going on. I'm very excited. And um, we will uh, reconvene again next month. Thank you very much. And we will adjourn at, uh, you can fill in the time, Lisa, because I've got a blank screen. <laughs> it is 2.35, so just okay. a shy early today, but don't get used to it, y'all. We usually go the whole stretch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank Bye -bye. you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.